and welcome to IABM TV. I'm Lorenzo Zanni, Head of Insight and Analysis at IABM. Today is, uh, uh, we're doing a discussion on um, Connect, one of the segments uh, uh, of our own content chain model, uh, looking at the main trends uh, uh, in this segment. Today we're joined by Bogdan Fruzina, founder of Tejero, and Alia Nistri, uh, Vice President of Product Development of uh, MX1. Uh, let me start from you, Bogdan. Sure. Um, I, I want to start from a very general question. Um, so what, what do you see as the main driver of change in connecting, expanding on, in, on connectivity uh, from your company's perspective? Sure. I, I think fundamentally is the way we gather content these days has changed dramatically. The needs for content are changed significantly. I think speed of content is really important. Uh, I think quality is becoming a little bit more of a whatever. Uh, and it has been the strength for a long time. But the big challenge out of this is that money is becoming a big issue for a lot of these customers. They just don't have it anymore the way they used to. Their production per minute has to be significantly lower than they used to do it. So they got to create more content than ever before with the same budget. Yeah. So you have to be able to provide a flexible connectivity solution that is always on, always available, always reliable in order to deliver that content from many different locations. So you will see a combination of satellite, uh, 5G, 4G LTE, uh, as well as Ethernet lines, like connectivity like it used to be, um, microwave as well. And, and sort of that setup has to become cheaper, faster to set up, quicker, less complex. Yeah. And from a technical perspective, it cannot be super technical because they're not sending technical people anymore. They're, they're just sending reporters in the field now to, to get, whether it's, I mean, you know, sp high-end sporting events, they still send technical staff, but that's becoming less and less in the news world, and I fully expect that trend to end up in sports as well, based yeah. on the growth level that's happening. And second league is already happening, in like if you're looking at football, or, or if you look at American football, it's, it's obviously the NHL is a huge deal, right? So it's already, a, a, the NFL is a huge deal. So, so whether it's hockey or, or, or American football, those things are not gonna go on, on with less technical staff, with less production cost around it. But they will try to get smarter. They're, now they're doing remote production and yeah. things like that. Um, on the other hand, the lower tier, like college football and, and, and second division, like or third division college football, is not going to become a thing where you can do it in different ways because the cost savings is very important and the value of the content is less. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of focus on efficiency and on making, making things easier. Yeah, for, for so, so we, like we as the Giro, we the way we look at it is we, we want to promote this concept of hybrid networking, of blended networks, yeah. because at the end of the day, that's what makes things simple. Plug in whatever you've got yeah. and the system be smart enough to figure out how to provide the optimized path yeah. as well as uh, the capacity that's always on, always connected with the lowest possible latency. Right. Because ultimately, that's what you need when you're running filters <coughs> on top of it. Right. Thanks for that. Uh, what do you see as the main changes uh, in, uh, in Connect? Yeah, I think um, Bogdan said that it's really the hybrid age. You know, this is really uh, the times where uh, we're seeing massive productions end to end that are using uh, different elements uh, from starting from SDI, <coughs> going to IP, going to uh, fiber, satellite, coming back, going back to SDI. So this is really what we're seeing. I think the adoption of um, uh, the IP technologies is still pretty slow, I mean, yeah. but it is. It is, you know, like coming. We're seeing it. Like new installations are starting to be almost like end-to-end -end IP, uh, but still there's a lot of uh, HDSDI, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of dependency on uh, legacy. Still, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bogdan, how yes. do you see the, the adoption of IP? Uh, Ariel mentioned it uh, at the moment. Well, so the way the way I look at it, I, I agree. It's it's not as fast as it can be for all different areas. Um, but because of the cost factor, so much sure people want to dabble in it and they want to test it out and try it. Some people are fully deploying it. I mean, yeah. we have products that are ready to go to market. I think I think MX1 does as well, and and we, we deliver stuff every day in and day out for customers. I mean, we we deliver millions of hours of content similar to you guys, and and uh, uh, that's a very important piece. But I think where where it's lacking, and and, and we were we we're just talking hypothetically, is why hasn't IP really like push through and part of that is while IP is a standard the transport layer is not so the decoders and the encoder are still custom and there's a lot of intelligence that goes into that link bonding 
uh, or link blending or, 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 or hybrid networking. So at least from our perspective, the way we look at it from a Dejero perspective is that we believe that if we make the link layer smart enough to handle video uh, like ARQ um, and, 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 and things like forward error correction all built into the link, and, and make it simple to use, then everyday encoders can be used. Because I think there's a standard called MPEG-TS, but MPEG-TS doesn't work with the public internet. So you have to do all kinds of magic to make that happen. Um, and to go to all the encoder companies and adopt the standard, that's going to be hard. To drive a standard will take three to five years. So I think the best way to do it is just provide a link layer that's really intelligent, and then the rest just works on top of it. That's interesting. Um, IP, of course, is a big driver of spending of in, course. In, in, yes. in your segment. Yep. What about Ari, what about the 4K USD and uh, uh, higher resolution formats? Yeah, uh, I how think do you see them at the moment? Yeah, I think that, mm, well, obviously production is, uh, is, is 4K and, and even above. I mean, that, that has definitely changed completely. On the delivery side, uh, the, the adoption is actually surprisingly slow still. Um, SCS, our parent company, currently has an offering of 12 4K channels in the US, um, offered to at least, I don't know, 30, 40 different platforms already. Uh, but uh, it's still slow. Um, many of the devices yeah, have been swapped you know, in homes. They're 4K ready. But the, the hardware isn't. The, the boxes, the OTT, the setup boxes, the, it's not there yet. That, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Until the infrastructure gets upgraded, yep. That's just not going to happen overnight. Yeah. Um, you take a signal, you, 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 you put it at full resolution over the air, and then you end up putting it in a Comcast box at three megabits per second. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a tough thing. I mean, whether, whether it's AT&T or any cable provider, or even satellite provider, they only have so much capacity. So using that much, uh, like DirecTV, using that much capacity of their, of their link, it, it, the, mon the money doesn't make sense for them because they got to squeeze as much content as they can in the satellites they have. Yeah. And that's what it's all about at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's very uh, interesting. So, so uh, coming back to my comment before, so would you say that um, the focus is more on the, uh, efficiency, as I said, making things easier for the customer rather than quality compared to the past as well? Huh. Or, or, or well, the quality so is still important? So look, H -E oh, I think it's important for sure because, I mean, uh, I'm sure all of you have watched a football game and you saw the pixelization happen, you go like, why? I'm, I'm, I know that's not the way it is at source, but it is what I'm seeing, which is horrible. I, I really think OTT boxes are going to change, like OTT content delivery with stuff that MX1 is working on is going to truly change the consumption of content and, and the way it's working. Because with the internet, you can deliver multiple 4K streams at the home. Yeah. And, and, and it's all unicast. The multicast world is, yep. is getting into trouble. Yeah. It's, it's we're having this big shift of multicast to unicast, and, and as more unicasts are going to happen, I think the reception on OTT is going to adopt significantly high. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, unless yeah, you disagree and, and on I that. I agree completely, and, and one of the main issues by going in that direction is latency, which is yeah. what one of the uh, main, I think, uh, use cases that, that Dejero is working on and yeah. uh, you know applying the best of breed solutions to reduce that 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 problem is really necessary to make it happen. Yeah, and you talk, we talked about the P. What about uh, 12G, 12G S S D I? Uh, do you see any customers yeah. investing in, in that, or do you see? More I, I, I can say that. Yeah. I mean, it can maybe be declared officially dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in okay. a way, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, that, that's how we feel. It's yeah. a it's a tough it's a tough thing out there for it. On the other hand, I will say glue will still exist. Yeah. Because I think, uh, here, here's the challenge. Right? I've talked to many chief engineers in general and, and asked them, I said, okay, so when is 702110 coming? What, what are you guys doing? So somebody like a CBC, for example, who has been very for, forward looking and they redesigned the entire building from scratch, obviously it's all 702110. However, they still have gear that is not 702110. So what do you do with that? Now you have to convert it. So glue still has to exist because you don't have an easy choice. Now, CBC took the route of redoing everything. What if you don't redo everything? What if you actually have to have a current plant? It is impossible for you to go to your boss and justify, sir or ma'am, after spending all this money on all this infrastructure, I want to rip it all out and build a yeah. brand new one. And by the way, can you please give me $60 million? Well, what's my ROI on it? And that's when you kind of go, oh. It's, it's very similar to 5G adoption. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I, the way I look at it is 5G, so LTE has not paid back the investment from an accounting perspective to the carriers, to the operators. So 5G, 
out there will deliver 28 gigahertz uh, spectrum, a millimeter wave spectrum, uh, because that's a direct competitors to cable lines, which then can deliver unicast streams. Awesome. When it comes to sub six gig, where we use your cell phone to deliver to deliver that connectivity, um, I think the cost of implementing 5G it will happen in the core denser areas, but going outside of the core dense areas that's going to be a challenge. Yeah. yeah. So from a, from a business model perspective, that's yeah, because the you got to convince the bean counters that the ROI is there, and you failed with LTE. Yeah. So now it's like, well, okay. Yeah. So it's not going to happen overnight, is it? No. Yeah. No. Uh, no way. Yeah. And. Uh, I'm you mentioned uh, 5G. How, how do you see 5G from your perspective? Yeah, 5G is uh, uh, yeah, an interesting topic for us. We are we have you know multiple teams working on on, on that. Um, it, it's it's another piece in the puzzle in the hybrid puzzle for us. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So if we can deliver solutions that you know depend on the best uh, delivery method, we we will use that in in the territory where it works best. Yeah. Uh, and Bogdan, you mentioned remote production, which is a very interesting Absolutely. topic because uh, everyone says that is beneficial for the end users, but adoption, we've seen adoption being slower than uh, uh, expected. Uh, of course. Uh, uh, what, what do you see uh, is lacking uh, from, well, there's from a, that there's perspective? Well, there's, there's a couple of things. I think connectivity is the fundamental one. Yeah. I can't draw fiber everywhere, yeah. that's for sure. And unfortunately, I have to have very low latency. So technology out there has limitations on what the minimum latency on things are. Uh, and because of that, you are now stuck with dealing with stuff that's not perfect latency or you can't delay it properly. So now, all of a sudden, you're causing problems in your workflow. Yeah. So I think, first of all, adapting your workflow to new environments and new worlds is really important. And second of all, having uh, always-on connectivity, reliable connectivity is key to, to make that work. And that's the path we're going down, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why we see the future. Hybrid networking, you know, like, again, is part of it. But, but the reason why hybrid networking is so important is because if you have a fiber line and you have a cell connection and you have a, and you have a satellite connection, if somebody trips over that fiber line, which by the way has happened during an NHL playoff game just recently, uh, and, and it backed it all up on cellular and the people at home had no clue that actually happened. So the fact that happened and, and a very large sports broadcaster realized that the people at home didn't even notice, they went like, wait a minute. <laughs> This actually is interesting. So, so anyway, so that was kind of an interesting experience for me because I think until that gets solved uh, and it's sort of readily available, it's going to be very hard to to do this. And 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 you're coming back from the old days where I really want to just take that 12G or 6G uh, SDI uh, or 702110. And I want to send eight, gig, eight, eight, eight gigabits per second, which is not going to happen. Yeah. That that is just not a practical approach. So you have to encode it. You have to be efficient about it. This is the only way you're going to get the only way you're going to get remote production off the ground. Interesting. In my opinion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <coughs> uh, so I'm going to ask you a final question to both of you. Um, so what's coming next uh, for your company, and uh, what do you, how do you see Connect uh, in the future, starting from you? Yeah. I think it's uh, really interesting times for the industry. Um, although we're feeling that the change is slow, it is, yeah. it is happening. Um, the, the skills are changing. The, the people required to deliver the same solutions. Um, it's a lot more IT, a lot more DevOps oriented, cloud, cloud deployments, a lot more AI integration. We're using it, starting to use it in, in many places from content you know, creation to moderation all the way to uh, rocket propulsion. There are AI tools that we're using all over the place. Uh, that's, that's becoming bigger. Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, we'll see more remote production, uh, definitely. Uh, we, we, we are, we, we have like our, our, our operation sites are already uh, functioning as a part of a remote production, um, you know, delivering audio streams, delivering, delivering ads, doing all kinds of um, interactivity in the field from remote. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, you know, hold on to your seat. It's going yeah. to be a, a fun ride, yeah, in the coming few years. Like that? Um, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, AI is a huge driver of this. I firmly believe in that. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the best part for us, for our positioning perspective is, look, we've come from the networking world from the good old BlackBerry days, Research in Motion, uh, and, and we've started with, with working on a smartphone many, many years ago. 
uh, at least that's what I did. And then afterwards, I saw this wonderful thing called the cloud yeah. that if you design it properly and not take archaic systems, just try to copy it over in a yeah. VMware machine and actually do a Kubernetes container that actually spins up, spins down, as you need more or less. All microservices based. Bingo. Yeah. So once you start once you start driving that, and, and that's, at, that's at our core DNA, I and mean, that's what we do every single day in and day out. So for us to actually make a difference and get really fortunate to be at the right time in the right place, yeah. it's really cool. And so we're really excited to deliver our vision of reliable connectivity anywhere, driving on top of traditional type links I mean, we're taking satellite links that are very much the same way they used to be in the past, yeah. but we're changing the way they're behaving, right? We're, we're looking at fiber links and connectivity links to make them reliable. And if you're moving production in the cloud, that on-ramp, which we are working on, it's called the video on-ramp product that we're working on, is, is the only thing that actually uh, you need, because then the rest of it is you build the microservices on top of that. So you do all your production, you do everything else in the cloud to deliver it. but. Without the content there, you can't do anything. So yeah. the way we look at it is delivering first mile reliable connectivity and last mile reliable connectivity is going to be key in the future of this. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much for this interesting discussion. I certainly learned a lot as well from it. So you can see the video of uh, this discussion on IABM uh, TV on the IABM website. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.